What I've got here is uh, one of these infamous vapes that you've probably seen in hedgerows or annoyingly close to public waste bins. You've got printed circuit boards, you've got sensors, and of course you've got the number one problem, which is the lithium-based batteries. These things aren't good because they can explode and create electrical fires. Today we're at Lion Vision, and for me this is really exciting as actually I've been keeping an eye on this company for over a year, ever since I took a visit to Sweep Kusikowski, uh, which is the UK's largest e-waste recycling plant. And, and I said, what's that? And it was a little bit top secret that this was essentially something to do with machine learning, looking at all the waste streams. And I'm here to basically follow up on that lead with the exciting work that they're doing at Lion Vision. We're doing vision-based machine learning, so detecting any sort of hazardous waste, really, that, that people want to be detected. So, in, I mean, at the news at the moment, I think you only have to wait about half a week, a week, before you hear about another recycling center catching fire. It's really about tackling this problem now while it's still somewhat manageable and so four years ago they started developing uh, the Lion Vision pro product uh, which is now able to detect batteries, vapes, uh, various types of cylinder batteries and various types of uh, consumer grade batteries. We've spent a lot of time acquiring a lot of data and really uh, harnessing the machine learning algorithm that we're using in order to really get to a high precision in terms of detecting these infrequent objects in the waste stream. One of the things I sort of heard anecdotally is that even telling the difference between a yellow and a red brick is incredibly difficult. That's obvious to a human eye, but it's not obvious to a machine eye. Absolutely. The computer sees things very differently to how you or I would, would look at an object. So I wonder, could we, could we start this process with something less complicated than a lithium battery? Could we maybe start it with, say, like, I don't know, some sweets? Could you put some sweets on the conveyor belt? And could we detect, like, my favorite one? Absolutely, we can, we can train a, a, our, our software over here to, to detect different types of, of sweets, yeah. Okay, so I've got some sweets. How does a computer understand the difference between these things? We will need a lot of images to train an algorithm. Thinking about color and shape is almost, we're applying human concepts back to the machine when actually it's not exactly how it thinks about it. But in an abstract concept, you would say that, yeah, to differentiate between these, there would be properties about the image pertaining to color that it would latch onto as, okay, that is a, uh, a toffee penny or, or whatever, and that is a uh, orange crunch. So in a really dumb way, is it a little bit like looking at each of these boxes and playing 20 questions, where each of those questions is a different past of filter? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I would say that, that, is a good, that is a good way of, of looking at it. And the whole training aspect of it is initially, the machine learning um, algorithm does not know what those questions pertain to. So it will then work out, okay, for those sorts of inputs, I need to say, this is a red suite and it is not all the other suites. Or at least it needs to value the red suite above all of the others. So could we, could we have a look at, you know, this example of the suites? Could we go have a look at how you train the AI on doing these suites on the real thing? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, yeah. For consistent detections, for something that's gonna have a high precision, you're going to want thousands of, of different views of the object uh, in different positions in slightly varying lighting conditions. You know, you can see in the frame here, there's a slight variation between, between lighting at points. Um, there's a lot of data processing pipelines that we use in order to create a, a data set for something like, you know, batteries and recycling. But when we're just dealing with, with suites here, essentially what we're trying to do is show the machine learning algorithm what we want it to detect. Like, I'm, I'm honestly genuinely impressed. <laughs> oh, like, oh God. That's like full... No, there's no negative, there's no mistakes. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, that's honestly really... The considering... magic of uh, machine learning. <laughs> so just stepping back from the whimsy of sweets here, how does this affect your sort of day-to-day -day job in terms of industrial e-waste?
so at Lion Vision, what we're currently able to detect uh, these sort of standard lithium ion packs, soft pouches, um, various types of, of vapes, obviously a very hot topic at the moment. Lithium ion cells, which are very, you know, very volatile, a, a culprit for a lot of for a lot of fires in recycling centers. So we also do consumer grade batteries. Um, so these are all found regularly in recycling waste streams. Uh, typically, items like these vapes at the point that we're detecting will be split open, which is again a problem because you start with one item that you need to remove. And then as soon as this is split open, you end up with six potential fire starters in your, in your waste stream. So I'd say that's really good. That's like 95% batteries in there. It's a heck of a conversion rate. No, yeah, I exactly. This is actually the data that we need to kind of reset some of those relationships with our goods that if we start to realize how many things aren't just magically getting recycled, <laughs> that actually it is a real burden on, you know, all sorts of different things, most, you know, without exception, the environment, then I think this is where it gets really powerful. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So this is where it's that moment where I was, you know, coming home from uh, working with George late one night and I was watching cyclists go by with their high-vis jackets and it gives back an incredible blast of light. And um, whilst we were on lunch, I went and just got some of this reflective tape from the shops and I sort of wondered whether that might be something we could have a go at testing to see whether that might work. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, like I said, anything to make it easier in the future is obviously going to be good for me. So. <laughs> so yeah, but I think this is the sort of thinking we need when battery manufacturers are putting things out. They need to also be responsible for getting it back. No, exactly. And you, you, you visit uh, recycling centres and a large part of recycling centres is enabling producer responsibility. And we're not really there at the moment with batteries, definitely not there with vapes uh, or any of those sorts of products. So. It's definitely something to potentially enable, yeah, producer responsibility for some of these dangerous items that are causing millions and millions of pounds worth of damage every year. I'm not even going to pretend this isn't awesome. I'm grinning like an idiot already. <laughs> Look at it go. Look at that. That is Yeah, popping. no, it absolutely pops out there. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's try it with the funky red. Even the red's looking good, isn't it? Yeah. I'm actually, oh, I can't say, I'm just wildly excited about this. <laughs> so I think the idea of, of, of making the battery more obvious it definitely makes the machine learning task easier. So this is where you think, could we put this to legislation to say the only way we could detect things is if they become more detectable. This has been great to showcase what Lion Vision's incredible capabilities are, but it also makes you think about what other industries could be transformed by this. And I think that for me is going to be the catalyst for not just new opportunities, but actually new jobs and new ways of thinking about how we can improve our circular economies and our sustainable design. I think in the modern day, you really need to make sure you don't fall behind in terms of technology. And so machine learning is definitely one of those buzzwords that gets knocked around a lot, but in reality, it really can do great things. This is really something that can be applied to a problem and, and can really change, change the world.